The grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning, everyone. We've come through a wee bit of unsettled weather recently, and it's been quite disturbing to hear about the effect that it's had on people's lives. But we're, we've got much in common with people in Scripture who were very conscious that so often circumstances came into their lives which were beyond their control. But in the midst of it, you heard voices of faith. The psalmist saying, God is our refuge and our strength and our present help in time of trouble. He goes on to say, even though the, the earth is unsettled and perhaps in a dangerous condition, we can rely on the presence of our good and loving God. And it's in that spirit that we gather for worship on this Lord's Day, and I pray God's blessing on you all. Let's begin by singing, Lord, you have come to the seashore.
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we cannot escape the influences that are brought to bear on us from the printed word, from images on screens, from impassioned speech. Our minds at times feel crowded. When called for opinions, we are confused. When we seek to think things through so often, there is no clarity. It's good then to be here today, to focus on you alone, to be reassured of your compassion, to aspire to a way through those things that challenge faith. Lord Jesus, in you we believe that there is a way to follow, that there is truth to embrace, that there is life to be lived all in the power of your Holy Spirit. So as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Let's read together in God's word now, friends, in the book of Psalms, Psalm 99, where the psalmist says, The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called in his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God, though you punished their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord, our God, and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord, our God, is holy. And he will bless to us this reading from his word. And may he give us grace to lay hold on the truths that will lead us forward in faith. We sing together now, Just As I Am.
Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for the ways that you reveal yourself to us in the beauty and variety of your creation in the love that we experience within our families and amongst our friends. But chiefly today, we thank you for your written word, these ancient voices of faith that come to us down through the millennia. And as we focus on them on this Lord's Day, we pray that our hearts would be set on fire with love for you who have provided so much for us according to your love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, if someone who knew nothing about the Bible were to ask you, what is the Bible all about? I wonder how you would respond. I think the obvious thing is to say that the Bible is about God and how down through the years he revealed himself to a people. But eventually you would have to also say that the Bible is the story of a people and how they responded to God when he was made known to them. That's really what Psalm 99 is all about. There is a a description of God contained here. We're told that he is awesome, that he is holy, that he's mighty, that he's, that he's just. All these qualities flow out from God. This is the way that he has revealed himself to humankind. But we're also told about a people who have responded to this God. Three people are named, Moses, Aaron, and Samuel. These were people who heard the call of God and they responded to God and they made themselves known to God. They believed that they would be heard by God when they called on him. Now you may say to yourself that when you think of Moses, Aaron, and and Samuel, that they're on a completely different level from us morally and and spiritually. But once you really think about it and understand what's being said about them in this psalm, you might be led to the conclusion that in many ways they're not that much different from us. I was reading someone who was commenting on this psalm and and this person said actually we can be in their company we can be in their company a people who called on the name of the Lord and who believed that they were heard by him they were a people Moses, Aaron and Samuel who believed that they were in a relationship with God, that they could turn their minds and their hearts towards God and that they would be heard by God. It might be that they were going through a time of of blessing and they wished to offer thanks to God for those good things that they had received in their lives. But in this psalm, What is highlighted is that when they went through times of need, they called on the name of the Lord. When they came upon times where it was beyond themselves to cope with the challenges that were being set before them, they had to do things that they couldn't do on their own and 
we can see this in, in the life of, of Moses as an example because there was a time when the people that he led were actually raising questions about his leadership and some of the judgments that he was making. And in response to this, Moses' priority was to call on the name of the Lord for his help. And we can see it also in the life of Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, who nevertheless, we are told, prayed often. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed in anguish. And on the cross, he called on the name of his Heavenly Father. Calling in the name of the Lord in time of, of need, it's all part of the pattern of a godly life. And this is something that, that, that we can do. We stand in a personal relationship with God. He is seeking to draw us closer to himself, to establish us in this relationship where we can believe that we are heard by our God when we come to him in prayer. Jesus spoke for God when he took on the persona of the Good Shepherd and said, I know my sheep. I know my sheep by name and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Moses, Aaron, Samuel called on the name of the Lord and in that respect we ourselves can keep company with our God. So they were men who called on the name of the Lord. And they were men who were forgiven. You know, there is no one in Scripture apart from our Lord Jesus himself, there is no one who is perfect. Those people of faith that we come up against, they all had their, their moral and spiritual lapses and there were times when they all stood in need of forgiveness. There were times in their lives when their relationship with God had been disturbed by their thoughts, by their words, by their actions. Shadows had fallen over their souls and made them feel that there was a barrier between them and God. But God responded to them. God broke through the barrier to assure them that they were forgiven. Now the whole business of forgiveness is, is very difficult. Sometimes it's difficult for us to forgive. And sometimes, as a consequence, it's difficult for us to believe that we have been forgiven. But this God, who is revealed in the Bible, wants us to understand that forgiveness is essential to his being. That he is seeking to, to bring the whole of creation back to himself as a cleansed creation and we as the most important aspect of his creation are included in that. He is calling us to a closer relationship with him and that means having our sins forgiven and we see the urgency of this within the very being of God in that he did not spare his only son so that we might stand as a forgiven people in his presence. There's a modern hymn which has a refrain that says quite simply we stand forgiven at the cross So we meet a people in this psalm and in the Bible generally who called in the name of the Lord, a people who were forgiven and a people who were directed in new ways by God. 
Sometimes it's difficult for us to believe that we have been forgiven, but there's an equal and opposite problem in that sometimes we take God's forgiveness for granted. It's like this bottomless well that we can drink from and perhaps feel an immediate sense of refreshment, but how does that really change our lives? Is there a commitment within us not to return to the ways that have troubled our souls at certain moments? You know, I heard an artist recently talking about the blank canvas and how it inspires him. He said, he said if, the, if, if there's anything that inspires you, surely it's that blank canvas canvas it's inviting me to create something new on that canvas and i began to think about the the human soul that god wants to wipe it clean so that there's nothing that stands between him and and us but not just to wipe it clean but to do something new on that cleansed soul to show evidence of the new creation that he is seeking to reveal now and which will be revealed in its fullness at the end of all things. What I'm, I'm trying to say is that God wants to remove the darkness from our lives. You know, the psalmist says in another place, as far as the, the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, that's the distance of the whole universe. God has, wants to take all of that stuff and, and, and send it into the depths of, of the universe, never to trouble us again. But that's not the end of the matter. The question arises, what now? We have this sense of forgiveness. But what will now be the evidence of the new creation in our lives? We're told that Moses, Aaron and Samuel kept the statutes and the degrees that God gave them. They weren't just a forgiven people they were also a directed people a people who were committed to walking in the ways of God you know there is a lot of discussion about John chapter 8 the beginning of John chapter 8 where Jesus refuses to condemn a woman who is caught or accused of adultery and that is quite clear, the Lord welcoming a, a, a broken life. But what sometimes is forgotten is uh, his final word to her. I don't condemn you, he said. You may go, but leave your life of sin. Forgiveness is not the end of the story. How deeply are we committed to walking in ways that will not cloud our relationship with God but enable us to be at peace with God with nothing that disturbs our relationship with him. So Psalm 99 may be a good introduction to someone who wants to know what the the Bible is, is all about because here we learn of God but we also learn of his vision for us that we become a people who call in the name of the Lord a people who are forgiven and a people who walk in the ways of the eternal Father let us pray 
God, our Father, we give thanks to you that you have revealed yourself to us through your words and through lives that have been lived according to your ways. We think of people in the past who have influenced us and in whose kindness and concern for us have shown the very love of Christ. And we give thanks for them today, especially those who are now beyond our sight, our touch, and our call, and who know the perfection of the life to come. We would pray for your church this morning, wherever she is. For those in our own land who are pressing through these days of challenge, adapting to the conditions in which they find themselves. But also we remember those people who are in lands that we don't know, but we do hear of their struggles, of their persecution, of the lives that are made so difficult because of their love for the Lord Jesus. And we remember our world at this time where the news is not always encouraging. Hunger in Afghanistan, the threat of war in the Ukraine. Lord, so many shadows can fall upon our minds and hearts in the course of a day when we hear the news. So we pray in this moment that all those in great need will be provided for and that war will be avoided. We remember also at this time our own nation praying for the leadership of all four countries of the United Kingdom, praying that wisdom will be in the minds of all those who hold the great offices of state and pray that the needs of those who are on the margins of society will always be in their hearts. And we pray also for those we know who are finding life hard and ask that by your grace they will call on the name of the Lord, that they will receive what is most needed in this moment and that they would go forward with a renewed sense of your grace in their lives. We're thinking about those who are sick, those who are in hospital in this moment, those who are recovering from surgery, those going through tests, and those who are having to face the rest of their days without the companionship of one who was very dear to them. Lord, we hold them in our hearts and pray that your spirit would bring healing and encouragement and peace. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus. And here is now as together we say his prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We sing together, friends, as a fire is meant for burning.
Now may you go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.